Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Home Video Library. I'm your host Nathan P. Butler. We continue our look at some foreign releases and this big run of episodes with the Grogu Wanted shirt here that I'm recording all on the same day. Uh, we have previously looked at early VHS releases of A New Hope out of the UK. Uh, we, when available, also included beta, and we even took a look at a V2000 copy of A New Hope, the Video 2000 format that really wasn't a thing, at least for Star Wars, over in the US. Now, what we're going to look at this time is three different initial releases of The Empire Strikes Back. This is 1984. This is as the UK market is getting a little closer to sell through being the norm. So these would be things that you could typically have found for rent. You might have been able to purchase through special offers or through uh, specialty stores, but which were not as widely available as what Americans would typically think of as standard retail. That's when you get to the sell through stuff that comes a little bit later. We're going to look at three copies here. We're going to look at the Empire Strikes Back's initial release in VHS, beta, and V2000 formats. I believe I actually have the Laserdisc, possibly, uh, from Matt Fry. These are all from Matt Fry. Um, but right now, the Laserdiscs from Matt are mostly in my closet, stacked up to keep them protected, which is currently covered up by a ton of toddler toys. So rather than having to dig through it and risk losing some recording time, we're going to look at Laserdisc for some of the earlier stuff uh, later on and focus just on the ones that are very similar in look here as they are cassette formats. So... We're going to start out here with the, oh, let's start with Betamax copy. So it's 1984. We have a Betamax release here of The Empire Strikes Back. Now, these containers, these clamshell cases that say CBS Fox Video up at the top, these were pretty typical for rental stuff. Um, they were switching over to uh, white eventually. I've seen evidence that there were both gray and white cases used for the early Empire Strikes Back stuff, okay? So we have up here, the Star Wars saga continues. And then this has a sticker on it from a rental place, presumably. And then we've got uh, our image there, pretty cool imagery that you don't see on a lot of, in fact, I don't think any US releases off the top of my head. Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back logo in black and white. Cast crew information here, okay? And then CBS Fox video down at the bottom. Spine, CBS Fox Video, similar image to the front, except a lot of dead space there because they then, of course, took the logo and added it down here instead. A little bit of dirt here may have been a sticker there at some point. Beta symbol for Beta Max, right? Beta symbol with Etamax, buy it, Beta Max. Product number here. You notice that the product numbers are actually different from item to item here with these UK releases. And it says CBS Fox Video at the bottom. Okay, that's going to matter here in a second, the design of this. Then on the back, CBS Fox Video, two images from the film. The battle continues, and the universe shudders. Info about the film, color and running time. A little bit of legalese there, a little bit of legalese down here with that UK rating. Um, a lot of the early Star Wars stuff was pre-cert, the, the, the really early stuff, like the, for A New Hope, was pre-certification or pre-cert, which meant they didn't have to necessarily have... Um, the ratings on the products. But as you go over time, you start to see it becoming more common, then becoming required. Okay, so there's the Empire Strikes Back packaging there. The inside, this apparently was from a video store. If anybody happens to live near that over in the UK, I have no idea where that is. And we have our CBS Fox video as part of the case design again. And the actual cassette, CBS Fox video, The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, copyright and legalese stuff here. Stereo, copyright and whatnot down here. Again, nothing on the sides. This was what presumably was an old uh, sticker from maybe a rental place, but nothing officially on any of the smaller sides, just that printed on label there. Libel? That printed on label there. That printed on label <clears throat> right there. And I must say, I do like the fact that these cases, because they were used for multiple formats, these cases actually make it so that you can sit your beta in there and uh, it won't flop around. Like, you know, in the U.S., a lot of times it was just a standard slip case. Let's stick the beta cassette in there and let it flop around if you happen to lose the little cardboard piece. All right. Beyond that, then, we have VHS. And I used VHS second because there is a reason behind it, a difference that VHS and Video 2000 have in the packaging that you don't see on beta. Notice essentially the same front 
and a similarly designed spine, but you'll notice here, we put these together, that on the VHS one, before it says VHS in the product number, it says stereo, and it says Dolby system, okay? And then the back is essentially the same, but everything is sort of raised up just a little bit, so there's a little extra line of text down here that is specifically the Dolby trademark information. The Dolby information applies to Video 2000 and VHS, but not to Beta. The actual cassette, this one is pretty beat up, actually. Top is kind of snapped there. But you've got a similar label design right here. Nada, nada, but a rental type sticker, nada. And then the format that we didn't see over here, Video 2000 or V2000. Notice here it says Video 2000. What's interesting with this is it says stereo, right? Video 2000 with the product number, but this looks like a sticker over it, which suggests to me that either VHS cases were being reused and they just put the sticker over top of it, uh, like they did a lot of times in the US with the little beta stickers, or this could have been a video store relabeling it if the packaging got messed up or lost or something. Hard for me to say. Um, I don't know if it was common for that sticker because the video 2000s themselves are not common. They're uncommon enough that just one or two examples isn't enough of a sample size to tell if that's, you know, the way it should be or not, unfortunately. Notice it does have the Dolby stuff listed underneath here as well, which again, either leads me to believe that, it's, that Dolby was a thing for video 2000 for this, or it's a VHS case just reused with this here, but you would think if it was officially that sticker over stuff to turn into a video 2000 case and Dolby didn't apply because it's not over here, then that line would also have been covered up and it was not. And then here is a video 2000 cassette again. Okay. This one gives us an actual label. Okay. Now it's upside down the way I was holding it there. I'm holding it like that because the, uh, the copies that Matt Fry had, were probably from rental places or some previous collection because they have little you know, punched number labels put onto them, presumably by a previous owner, hence me holding them that way. But here you go. CBS Fox Video, The Empire Strikes Back, plenty of legalese and product number, and then that same number that was put on there by a previous owner is also on there as well. And you get your little spots there. Kind of a cool, different format, but yes, when The Empire Strikes Back originally hit home video back in 1984 in the UK, you could have gotten Video 2000. Again, probably more of a specialty store thing or a rental thing than actually something that most people would be able to actually go out and buy, sell through, uh, was going to become bigger over time, particularly within really the next year or two after this. Um, but those were those original three cassette-based Empire Strikes Back releases from the UK from 84. We'll see more as we look at Return of the Jedi in our next episode. Thank you for watching. You may the Force be with the home video viewers.